Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. Today we are looking at the flagship of the line, or I should say the flagship of Corum's sporting lineup. This is the Corum Admiral's Cup Split Seconds Black Split Seconds Limited Edition, one of 55 made in a combination of PVD and brushed stainless steel. This is an exceptional example of one of the latest and most distinctive complicated Admiral's Cup models from Corum. Now, Corum was only established in 1955, so with a relatively short history, the Admiral's Cup spans most of the company's term in business. Released in 1960 as a sort of embryonic sports model, in 1983 it gained the distinctive 12-faceted dial and 12-faceted sapphire that you see right here. It also gained the nautical pennants around the periphery that have become essentially iconic of the model. 2006, it becomes the watch that you more or less see here. The big, bold, contemporary looking sports watch. Very much in keeping with modern tastes, but nevertheless retaining those signature items, especially the pennants and that 12 sided case, bezel, and sapphire. Very distinctive, really unique, one of a kind. There's nothing else that's exactly like the Admiral's Cup in shape or style. Now, on my wrist, you can see the watch is 44 millimeters and about 15 millimeters thick. The standout feature in a profile shot really is the faceting of the flanks and the two-tone effect of the retropont pusher for the split second, the bezel in contrast with the case flanks and the lugs. Now this watch is the black split seconds, so you can see how the case, the lugs, the strap really blend together in one seamless monotone continuity, placing the emphasis strongly on that 12-sided dial. Now the watch fits easily on my wrist. I want to emphasize that although it is a relatively thick 44 millimeter thick, uh, rather 44 millimeter wide watch, it's far more compact than something like a 44 millimeter Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller or a 44 millimeter Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore. It feels more wieldy. It feels like it takes up less real estate on the skin. Now, my wrist is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. So I want to emphasize that my wrist is a little bit below average in size. If your wrist is comparable in size to mine, and you can see that the straps are actually flaring out a little bit. I haven't even pulled them straight down. I, I think you're going to find that this watch is quite agreeable in every respect. Ergonomically, I think this watch will work on a wrist down to about 15 centimeters in circumference, so I'm not even pushing the lower limit of what will work with this watch. Now, Corum does a fantastic job of styling this watch. Everything from the bolstering of the strap, which is anything but a flat, tapered piece of rubber, you can see the faceted shoulder, almost a nautical pennant in its own right, tapering down as the strap moves away from the lugs, and that's repeated on both sides. It's really beautifully molded, and it has a gorgeous texture on the bottom that holds it secure on the wrist. Now you can see the Corum Admiral's Cup script and Cor Corum Corporate Marquee. So the attention to detail, even on the side that's unseen, is exceptional. Now the twin trigger double deployant is a very robust, very solid feeling piece in the hand. I'm very impressed by how much attention to detail, engineering, and finishing effort went into this. Now, it's all brushed with the exception of the triggers themselves, which are polished, so the detailing is excellent, and it feels very solid, milled out all of a piece, almost like really high-end precision equipment. It feels almost like the way Rolex would execute a double deployant. It feels that solid. It has me thinking about Rolex as I feel it, as I work it in my hands, as I open and close it. And that's the mark of excellence, because Rolex, these days, with the new milled-out clasps and bracelets, really sets the standard, and Corum is absolutely up to that standard. An impressive feat. Now, the watch has a look that, as I mentioned earlier, is distinctively the Admiral's Cup. Not only does it feature that 12-sided bezel, but it actually features the only 12-sided sapphire I believe I've ever seen. A tremendously distinctive look, it really sets it apart. Anything but a generic chronograph aesthetic, that continues with the dished bezel and the dished rayhot, which flows downward towards the silver dial. Each of the 12 facets of that rayhot features an individual nautical pennant as used for signaling during regatta and during maritime days of yore, so to speak. So it's a vintage look, 
but it's very much in keeping with the spirit of the watch. Nautical, evocative, romantic, I like it, it works. The dial itself features a tri-register chronograph and it is a split second. You can almost miss that fact because the split second actuator right here, now you can see the second split right there, it's so neatly integrated into the case that if it weren't a contrasting polished metal, it would almost blend right into that particular facet of the black flank. This is a Rattrapont that does not look like a Rattrapont, and that's very artfully done by Corum. This is about as discreet as a split seconds actuator can be, and yet, if you watch the watch, dink, flies back. As per the name Rattrapont, the hands fly back together. Now you can time two simultaneous events, such as two yachts racing in regatta, using a split second, but if you're a racing fan, if you want to time two runners at the kids track meet. The Retropon is good for that too. It's also a spectacular little piece of visual fireworks. If you just want to demonstrate complications for your watch loving friends or for those who are not yet watch lovers, it's a great gateway drug in that sense. Now the chronograph actuators on the crown side are neatly integrated. This reads as visually one big piece. It could be a large extended two-tone crown guard. I don't read these as buttons so much as an extended piece of the strong geometries of the case. So that's well done as well, and the contrast enlivens the assembly right here. You can see that only the crown is polished. It's also beautifully knurled to make for an easy grip. Now it is a screw down crown, so you have 100 meters or 330 feet of water resistance, more than enough, but exactly what you'd expect from a watch dubbed Admiral's Cup. Now on the case back, you can see the 7750 based automatic winding Rattrapont chronograph caliber extensively polished with some matte finished metallic surfaces, cobalt heat blued screws, actually quite beautiful and entertaining. Not every variant of the 7750 is, shall we say, an aesthetic winner, but Corum does a great job with this example. Not only is it beautiful to look at, but the engineering is a thing of beauty as this example is finished to the highest standard available, COSC chronometer spec. So this watch, in addition to being a Rattrapont, an icon of the Corum line, and a suitable wet and wild watch for playtime. It's also a certified chronometer, a COSC rated Swiss chronometer. So there's a lot of content, there's a lot of watchmaking interest here. There's a lot of watchmaking engineering interest for those who are into the guts of the watch and not just the look, although we've established that this watch definitely nails the look. 44 millimeters with a gorgeous two-tone black and white metallic look. A beautiful rubber strap with real attention to detail in the designs and in ways that a lot of companies simply overlook, not just integrated into the lugs, but stylishly tapered into the functional portions of the strap with a clasp to match and a watch that can only be described as Corum's modern icon along with the Golden Bridge. This Corum Admiral's Cup split second, black split second, limited edition of 55, 44 millimeters in PVD black stainless steel just may be the watch you want for fun in the sun and on the water this summer.